Um, Dr. Andrew Catalaris, I graduated from Sydney University in 1982 and practised hospital-based medicine before taking up an NHMRC scholarship to do research in immunopathology, complications of bone marrow transplantation. My involvement with cannabis started really on the basis of ecology, right? Um, in 1988, I did a, a study tour of Holland and saw what they were doing with the Dutch hemp project, right? There I saw a government that was prepared to put up $23 million to research ways of improving the agricultural cycle by using hemp in uh, rotation. Right? I spent uh, about mon a month there studying, did some filming, did some record taking. When I came back to Australia, I thought this is going to be so easy. I'll go to the Department of Health and I applied for a 23.4B licence in 1990. 23.4B is a section within the Drugs Misuse and Trafficking Act to grow an otherwise prohibited plant for scientific research or analysis. Seven years later, Seven years later, I got my first drug, uh, 23.4B licence and I used that to actually breed up some Australian hemp. In 2002, under Bob Carr's auspices, I actually got the first, from what I'm aware, first 23.4B licence to grow drug cannabis and we set up a grow shed out at Corindai uh, with about 10,000 watts of light in cooperation with Southern Cross University. The understanding we had then when we made that investment was that this was the first year for extraction technology, uh, shelf life stability, and it would proceed to clinical trials the next year. That didn't happen by an act of political duplicity. The project was shut down, and a year later, they cancelled my fibre licences, uh, stating that I lacked scientific merit. I produced documentation from Professor Ron Possel at the textile uh, school at New South Wales University, who said that the work we'd been doing with breeding, we'd actually bred a hemp down to 12 microns, which was uh, really down to sort of super fine merino uh, type. And uh, the laboratories in Germany and Japan that he sent this to for analysis said they'd never seen anything like it. We were using Italian genetics at that stage, and they were very interested in where the work was going, especially with advanced textile processing called steam explosion. Unfortunately, the Department of Health, after I made several critical comments about this slowness to act, cancelled. My, uh, my other licence, and after two years of applying for it to be reinstated, I actually grew a hemp crop so that the genetics wouldn't be lost at the Hunter Valley. Uh, 30 armed police were sent to round me up, and uh, I spent the night at Maitland Jail. After a prolonged court case, of which um, we can talk another time, I was actually uh, let off on a three-year good behaviour bond, but unfortunately, despite a court order to protect genetics, the police burnt them all, every one, down to the last seed and we lost seven years of vital research, which is going to be very, hev uh, very hard to uh, duplicate. Not to be dissuaded, uh, I've formed a cooperation with other people now, and the industrial hemp work is continuing. I made an application in 2008 to have the hemp seed legalised as human food in this country. This is one of the few countries on earth that doesn't allow the nutri nutritional use of hemp seed. It's a disgrace because nutraceutically there is nothing quite as nutri uh, nutritionally dense as a hemp seed and it's a disgrace that it's taken this long. A normal Fizance application should go through in 18 months. This has been in abeyance for six years, right? We're hoping to get a result this January. First, firstly, I don't think Mr Baird can claim ignorance. We've supplied details about the childhood epilepsy uses Right. I've said before yesterday, and I may have been criticised, it's a crime against humanity that people that we pay a large salary to, a large salary in the Department of Health, have done nothing but obstruct the development of the fibre industry, the seed industry and the medical industry, and we deserve better as a people, I'd like to think. Right? It is a very simple matter to reschedule CBD-dominant cannabis, which can be planted now in the last part of this year and used immediately or as soon as it harvests for the epilepsy population. So Andrew, is, is that the main issue for you, the rescheduling of, of, um, of CBD dominant Listen, cannabis? ultimately, my view politically is that the prohibition is one of the greatest crimes against planet Earth and the people on it. There is no <laughs> doubt about that, right? Mm. No, what, what, I'm not being uh, playing to a crowd here, right? We had a good world that ran on carbohydrates. In the 1920s, it went to hydrocarbons and we unleashed the synthetic chemicals which is ruining this planet, right? What I know about the industrial uses of hemp, we can go back to a green, clean world, right? Once we actually unhook ourselves from the DuPonts and the, the Exxons okay. and all the rest of it, right. the medical costs. I was deregistered in 2005 despite the fact that I took a number of patients as giving evidence. One of the HIV patients, well, I'd saved the government $20,000 a year 
by using cannabis tincture, right? That goes on and on. They simply weren't interested. And as I say, we d deserve a better health system. Mm. We've only got about 10 minutes to go, so at this point it'd be great if um, anyone did have any questions um, from our audience to, to please address us now. Cassie. The question I don't think any of you will actually be able to give me an answer for, but I'll ask it anyway. In respect to the clinical trials, can you tell me why I would take my child off something that is working now, saving his life, to put him onto something that may not work? Right. Well, the answer is, <laughs> sorry, the answer to that is pretty simple. Don't volunteer for the clinical trial. <laughs> I presume keep doing what you're doing. Look, the clinical trials, the, the state governments don't tell doctors what they can and can't prescribe. And the idea that Mike Baird can say, oh, we'll just let the doctors prescribe, it's just completely without, outside of our jurisdiction. So the clinical trials will go forward and they're not, I mean, I keep hearing these five-year clinical trials. I think it's, you know, everybody's hope. They run for, you know, a year, I believe some can run for five years. But I mean, if anyone thinks having clinical trials is a bad thing, um, you're misunderstanding the way that we're going to engineer a way forward on this issue and, and open the gate. So that's why we're doing it. Um, the jurisdiction that we do have is over the law and order issues and that's what, you know, Mike is trying to deliver by Christmas. He wants relief to happen as quickly as, he, as it can be delivered. It's a, it's a compassionate policy and on, on that front in terms of, you know, whether it's prescribed or how that happens, He's investing resources and he's showing leadership by getting the other states together and pushing for it. And that's really, that's really um, a great thing, I think. That's the best way we can go forward. But the clinical trials, I think there might be a sense here that some people are saying, oh, the clinical trials are just some kind of delaying tactic. And that is absolutely not the case. Uh, it's, in my opinion, it's vital they go forward. If we dump the proposal for critical trials, do you really think this issue will be better off? I think, I think the momentum will be lost and it will be worse I off. I was just going to ask Mal, and then, and then you, Andrew, yeah. yeah. Cassie, yeah, the answer to that is, look, uh, I agree with clinical trials. I'm a doctor, right? But what we would do in a good clinical trial for you is keep your child on the cannabinoids you're currently using and see what the best for that child is. In other words, we continue the therapy and we give you ongoing management to get the best for you and your child, right? So we're not going to stop the thing. You're not going to do a placebo-based trial. A kid is dying with fits. I mean, that's lunacy. No one, I hope, in their sane mind would advocate that. But let me tell you some problems I have, right? Certainly, Helen brought up the fact that certainly Bayer and uh, Nevada have been knocking on the doors of Canberra, right, to get Sativex and other things, to, you know, for a wider exposure than just the spasm of multiple sclerosis. There's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is that if then they'll go through TGA and they use the TGA as a barrier against the rest of us, right? And the TGA won't approve a botanical product. Not if it's a category one drug. If it's a non-useful complementary medicine, in other words, it's a bullshit drug, they'll approve that as a botanical product. So it doesn't do you any good, right? But I mean, they'll approve that. But they won't approve this now it's got a category one, which is a false representation, but that's what we're stuck with. If you had Sativex, say, approved at $500 a month, do you honestly think anyone's going to change from using a botanical product and switch over to Sativex? So it's a waste of bloody time, right? Good on you, mate. Firstly, with in the cannabis treating community, there are clinical trials going on. I've done my own little pilot studies. Now, for instance, when I took on 12 of the intractable epilepsy cases, they were first treated with THC tincture. Then we swapped it to CBD. These are pilot studies. What I want to do next is get a 23-4-B or other license to grow enough of the anti-epileptic cannabis and do a pilot study on 200 kids. Right? That's not very difficult. They're already seizing every day. We don't need to put them on placebo to seize, see them seizing every day. And let, let me say this, you, you might think I get a little bit excited or a little bit emotional, but every time a child seizes, it's the equivalent of cuffing them about the head, right? Yeah. So we've got a government and a health yeah. department that are happy to sit by and watch thousands of Australian kids be constantly brain damaged every day of their lives when salvation is, is at hand. 